Hello everyone, myself Piyush Antandil, working as Assistant Professor in Electrical Engineering Department of Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technical Education and Research Center, Nosari. And the name of subject is Power System Planning and Design. We are talking about the chapter number one that is Transmission Line Design and this is the module number two. So directly moving forward, uh, we are going to see the choice of line conductor, how we are going to select our line conductors. Okay? So conductor used for transmission power or conductor used for transmission of power should have the following properties. So there are several properties that we are going to see. So first one, uh, they should have a low resistivity. Okay, of course it is the most priority things because if the resistivity is, resistivity is high, then the current flowing from the conductor is going to be reduced. So they should have low resistivity or we can also say high conductivity in order to carry more current. So uh, by uh, reducing the resistivity or increasing the conductivity, the amount of current that is carried by the conductor is going to be increased. Okay. Second one that is they should have high mechanical tensile strength to withstand mechanical loads like ice, stone, beam, etc. So the conductor have also high mechanical strength because uh, conductor are going to sag between two different poles. Okay, So it have that much amount of capability or it have that much amount of mechanical strength to withstand the ice that is going to form on the conductor or we can say or uh, storms or any kind of wind pressure that uh, the conductor should bear. Okay, Next that is the they should be corrosion free there uh, there is no corrosional effect or seasonal corrosion effect due to the different different season the conductor does not need to uh, catch up the corrosion because if it is going to be catch up the corrosion the resistivity of the conductor is going to be increased and uh, it is bad for our currents okay so they should be free from corrosion fourth one that is they should have a light in weight because if the weight of the conductor is going to be light at that time the sag between the conductors or we can say sag between the poles is also going to be reduced and lighter the weight less the mechanical strength is required then after uh, they should cause minimum voltage drop okay so conductor should cause minimum voltage drop that we can also say as a ir drop and power loss that is i square r losses so can we need to choose a conductor that have low amount of or we can say minimum amount of voltage drop and i square r drop then after six one that is they should be cheap of course they should be cheap because uh, it need to be economical to use the uh, cable then after they should be flexible this is the reason that the standard conductor are performed okay the conductor need to be flexible conductor need to be flexible these are the seven different different uh, properties that the uh, conductor need to be obvious okay next we are going to see the types of the conductor so in view of this requirement the following material are used for making the different conductor these four are the different materials that we are going to use as a making of conductor so first one that is the copper conductor second one that is the aluminium conductor third one that is the ecsr conductor and fourth one that is galvanized steel conductor okay so we are going to see uh, each and every points in detail so starting with the copper conductor so the hard drone bare copper that is also called as a HB, HDBC hard drone bare copper is the most widely used material for transmission and distribution of overhead as well as underground okay overhead as well as underground so it is most widely used that is the copper material is most widely used in transmission as well as in distribution this is due to its high conductivity because we all know the copper have the highest amount of conductivity then high resistivity against corrosion it is not against the electrical but it is against corrosion so it is not going to capture corrosion easily the resistivity of corrosion is very high then after high current density so the amount of current we can transfer through the copper conductor is also very high and homogeneous okay the only negative point is that it is costly these are the all different advantages of the copper conductor but the only negative uh, point is that the copper conductor is costly than the other conductor available and this is the reason that it is being replaced by the aluminium because aluminium is more cheaper than the copper so let's see the next one that is aluminium 
so aluminum is the next base conductor material after the copper aluminum is next base conductor after the copper for transmission and distribution purposes okay uh, we are going to see the difference between aluminum and conductor in the next uh, couple of slides but right now we need to understand that the aluminum is next based next based it is not a based but next based because based conductor is copper conductor next it means second based conductor that is the aluminum conductor okay it conductivity is less than it is its conductivity is less that is two third of the copper you also need to remember that its conductivity or we can say aluminium's conductivity is two third of its copper conductivity but it is lighter in weight that is one third of the copper conductor so the weight of the same amount of conductor is lighter than the copper conductor next that is therefore a large cross sectional of aluminum as compared to copper is required for the same circuit because it have less amount of conductivity but the weight of the aluminum conductor is lesser than the weight of the copper conductor it need higher towers because if we are going to increase the cross sectional area of the conductor the height of the tower is also going to be increased it is more affected by sag due to weak mechanical strength because aluminum have weak mechanical strength as compared to the copper and with aluminum conductor the length of span is also reduced because it's have me less mechanical strength and however it is very much in use in place of copper due to low cost so it is the point advantage of the copper that is it have less uh, cost the, uh, the aluminum have less cost than the copper ones next that is the comparison between aluminum and copper we can compare both the property of aluminum and copper so first of all we are going to see the conductivity so the conductivity of copper is much higher than the conductivity of aluminum as we can see over here then after resistivity resistivity is in micro ohm per centimeter so copper resistivity is 1.77 in micro ohm per centimeter and resistivity is alum, resistivity of aluminum is higher than the copper one then after specific gravity that is higher than higher in copper because the weight of copper conductor is higher than the weight of aluminum conductor okay then after here is the tensile strength so tensile strength is copper of copper is also high as compared to the tensile strength of the aluminum then after coefficient of linear expansion it means whenever we are going to increase the temperature or decrease the temperature the expansion of the conductor that is less affected in copper as compared to the aluminum then after temperature coefficient of resistance so if we are going to increase the temperature or decrease the temperature its resistance is also going to be increase or de decrease with the same order either the conductor or we can say the material is positive temperature coefficient or negative temperature coefficient so right now we are going to see the conductors only so copper conductor that have 0.003 per degree celsius that is the change in resistance and for the aluminum it is 0.004 so it is not that much of a, like considerable but we can neglect these two difference okay next that is the ratio of conductiveness for equal area so that the ratio for the equal area conductiveness for the copper is 1 and for aluminum is 0 0.6 so uh, for aluminum it is lesser than the copper one and ratio of diameter for equal resistance that is the ratio of diameter for the same resistance the conductor of the copper is lesser than the conductor in aluminum next that is the weight ratio so the copper is uh, heavier than the aluminum okay so these are the basic comparison that is the properties of aluminum and copper next we are going to see the ac sr conductor now what is the full form of ac sr conductor that is aluminum conductor with steel reinforcement again ac sr conductor that is aluminum conductor with steel reinforcement has become very popular now okay now it is very popular and widely used in our transmission and distribution system now it is uh, it has a core of galvanized or to prevent corrosion galvanized why we are going to use galvanized steel to prevent corrosion steel surrounded by aluminum strips so over here as we can see uh, here are shaded or we can say dark conductor that is the steel core here that is the steel core and surrounded by the aluminum conductor so all these are different aluminum conductors that are surrounding on the steel roads okay so this is called as a aluminum conductor so over here what is the conductor medium that is the aluminum and uh, what is the uh, reinforcement that is the steel reinforcement so steel is in the center and aluminum is bounded on the steel cables okay 
so still takes the mechanical stress uh, so whatever the mechanical stress that is tensile stress then after the wind pressure and uh, ice on the conductor all these things are going to be captured or we can say bear by the steel conductor okay while aluminum strands carry the current due to the high mechanical strength sag is small so high mechanical strength uh, what is the mechanical strength of but uh, aluminum aluminum's mechanical strength is less but the steel mechanical strength is higher so all the strain that are going to be act on the conductor is mainly bear with the help of steel core only so the mechanical overall mechanical strength of the conductor is going to be increased now therefore large span can be used and uh, that large span it means that uh, distance between two tower can be increased we can easily increase the distance between two tower and however skin effect is very pronounced in this conductor so we all know whenever we are going to supply the ac supply from the conductor the uh, ac supply is going to create some amount of skin effect so the electron are going to flow on the edge of the conductor we can say the surface of the conductor it is not going to flow from the center of the conductor so using the steel core that there is no amount of or we can say very less amount of current is flowing from the steel core and most of the current that is major part of the current is going to flow from only the aluminum conductor so this is your acsr conductor next that is the galvanized steel so due to high tensile strength galvanized steel can be used at extremely large span at large span it means the distance between two tower is going to be extremely increased it have large mechanical tensile strength so we can use that now galvanized pro uh, protects steel against corrosion we all know galvanized is going to be protect our steel against the corrosion they are more in used in rural areas where cost is the main consideration when the cost is main consideration at that time in the rural area we can use the galvanized steel wire also uh, their use is uh, if limited to transmission of small power over a small distance we cannot use at a large distance uh, the galvanized steel wire we cannot use from the large distance we can only use for the short distance and small power small amount of power they are also used as earth wire on poles as stray wire and have other similar applications so we can also use galvanized steel wire or we can directly call as a steel wire as a earth wire or we can say a gay wire okay now the different ty different type of conductor are used on transmission line depending upon the voltage class and amount of current to be handled so depending on the amount of current and whatever the voltage that a conductor have to be handled we can select any kind of any four kind of conductors from the following okay now in india it is the standard practice to use following conductor for different voltages for different voltages we have different acs conductor and right now we are using only acs conductor so if you uh, you are going to visit any substation like 66 kv substation or uh, 22 kv or 400 kv substation at that time you are going to see this different type of conductor so for 66 kv conductor we are going to use dog conductor it is called as a dog conductor the bonding of the uh, aluminum over the core of steel that is depending upon on that, that is going to name it as a dog conductor then after for using the 66 to 132 kv we are going to use the panther conductor for the 220 kv uh, kv line we are going to use zebra conductor and for 400 kv line we are going to use acsr twin most conductor okay these are different type of conductors that we are going to use at different level of voltages so first of all dog conductor for 66 kv 66 to 130 we are going to use panther conductor for 220 kv we are going to use zebra conductor and for 400 kv we are going to use most conductor okay now here are some uh, tables which indicate the nominal voltage level and steel and aluminum required and its current carry capacity like uh, first one that is the acsr dog conductor that is nominal operating voltage range that is 33 to 66 kv as we already know then after its aluminum number per mm it is it means six aluminum numbers are required straight that is threading size required by of the 4.72 mm size six of the straight are required of 4.72 mm side or we can say in steel seven straight are required of 1.57 mm size okay and its current carrying capacity at 20 uh, 75 degree celsius that is 300 ampere its overall diameter in centimeter is 1.2 that is the overall diameter of the conductor and uh, it is the uh, unit tensile strength that is 
320 uh, 3299 kg okay and its unit weight that is 0 0.394 kg per meter okay so uh, uh, these all are given that is panther zebra and moose you can note down these all the values in your note also for uh, references okay next we are going to see the stranded conductor used for the transmission line so the approximate dimension uh, weights resistance and breaking strength of standard conductor hard drawn copper that is hdbc is given in table so if whenever we are going to use hard drawn copper right, right now we are not talking about the acsr conductor but we are talking about the hard drawn copper conductor at the time we need to refer this table number 1.5 so note this down table in your note or you can also take a screenshot of this table okay now over here we have given standard nominal centimeter that is the dimension uh, in nominal then after number of straight and wire diameter okay over here 3 that is the straight and 0 0.265 that is in centimeter its diameter is given okay for which value of nominal straight we are going to use which number of straight and what is the diameter that we are going to use and over here we can see in third column approximate overall diameter of the conductor is given in third set uh, third row third column and it is also in centimeter again here we have weight in kg and approximate resistance per kilometer at 20 degrees celsius so this is the approximate resistance of the conductor and the approximate breaking load so this is the breaking load in kg so uh, after that weight the cable is going to be break down so this is the breaking load capacity of that conductor of particular nominal straight so we need to uh, find the straight all the quantity we are going to get from this table so note this down uh, in your notebook also okay now next we are going to see the figure that is uh, shows the current carrying capacity of ampere for bare copper straight conductor overhead uh, uh, current and steel air and based on 30 degree temperature rise so this is the graph of current carrying capacity of conductor in amperes okay so over here uh, it is the area and over here uh, the, on the x axis we have the current carrying capacity of amperes and on y axis we have area in centimeter okay so this is the graph of current carrying capacity in amp for base spread at the 30 degree celsius Next we are going to see uh, the table number 1.6 this is for the ACSR conductor and for that nominal copper area required that is in centimeter square number of straight and wire diameter that is for aluminium it is different and steel it is also different and overall approximate diameter that is overall diameter of the conductor then after calculate resistance per kilometer degree celsius this is the per kilometer at 20 degree celsius given and approximately total weight per kilometer and calculated breaking load capacity of the conductor this is in kg so while we are going to calculate the line loading and with respect to the line loading whenever we are going to select the voltage level and after selecting the voltage level we are going to find the value of current so at for some amount of current we need to find the nominal copper area and for that we require all this value while calculating or we can say designing the transmission line so note this down in your notebook also it is going to use us in the uh, next chapter or we can say next uh, theories so here is also the figure that is the current carrying capacity of acsr conductor and area in cross sectional it is also same as the uh, hard thrown copper conductor okay so there is no uh, larger difference but only minor difference in acsr conductor and normally we are going to use the acsr conductor in our whenever we are going to design our transmission line over here this is the next table that is the rating of current okay whenever we are going to find uh, the calculation whenever we are going to find calculation from the calculation we have equation p is equal to root 3 into v into i into cos 5 okay from that value we are going to find or from the loading of the transmission line we are going to find the select the level of voltage by selecting the level of voltage we can find easily the value of current so from that equation we can find the value of current and with respect to that value of current we can see the value of current is 500 if we, the value of current is 500 then we need to choose this 505 or 580 for that if we are going to use the acsr conductor or if we are going to use the copper conductor what is the copper equivalent cross sectional area so from the value of conductor we are going to use the copper equivalent cross sectional area so this is the copper equivalent cross-sectional area in centimeter square okay 
so this table is also very much important while calculating the transmission loading or you can say while calculating the size of the conductor so from the value of current we can easily find the cross sectional area of the conductor with the help of table number 1.7 now we are going to see the uh, equation of spacing between conductors so the most most suitable spacing and arrangement for overhead transmission line conductor cannot be determined mathematically okay this is not uh, determined mathematically but uh, it is decided to have an empirical equation so german empirical equation is used for spacing of aluminum conductor and its spacing is defined is equal to root into d plus v by 150 meters where d is the sag in meter at 40 degrees celsius and v that is the voltage in kilo volt the spacing arrangement may be horizontal or vertical or equilateral triangle as may suited in circumstances so you have also seen something like this uh, type of uh, conductor arrangement three phase conductor arrangement or you have also seen like this type of conductor arrangement on the pole or you also seen the triangular type of conductor arrangement so whenever we are going to use whatever type of conductor arrangement the difference between that is the spacing between the conductor need to be specified with the help of empirical formula now in the uh, in area where there is no snowfall the horizontal configuration of conductor is most suitable the horizontal configuration is most suitable where where there is no so uh, sorry there is snowfall there is snowfall in area okay next here is the equivalent spacing between conductor and line to line voltage so once we have the line to line kv if we have line to line kv we can easily find the equivalent spacing between the conductor in 1 meter 1.3 meter 2.6 meter 5 meter if we have 132 kv at that time we can keep it as a 6 meter difference between, uh, between spacing between the conductors okay so you also have to write down this table in your notebook also or you can also take a screenshot of it and then after take a print out next here is the relation between the equivalent spacing of conductor against line to line voltages okay over here this is on the axis we have line to line voltage in kv and over here equilateral spacing between the conductors okay uh, that's it for this module uh, if you have any kind of query then please ask me in comment section thank you